Wage growth and inflation may soon slow further. This according to a new report that's out Wednesday from the Federal Reserve. The Fed said in its latest beige book that the economic growth in the U.S. was modest in July and August, and as most districts reported, price growth slowing overall. Our next guest says the economy's resilience has shown in consumer data and even earnings results, but is it enough to prompt Fed officials to scale back their estimates for rate cuts in 2024? Well, could we see that? That is the big question. Kristen Bitterly, City Global Wealth Head of North American Investments, uh, still here with us. So everyone wants to know, of course, and I especially, those who are trying to wait to see when rates are going to come down so that they can make some of those larger scale purchases, like a home. You know, is, is a cut something that we should expect in 2024? I think we should expect a cut in 2024. You can see what the market is doing right now in terms of pricing out some of the cuts that were very aggressively priced in just a couple of months ago. It's this dynamic between hard landing, soft landing scenario. I think one of the things that the Fed has given us in terms of some of their commentary around this, because if you look at what is their mandate, it's really full employment and price stability. And so if they were able to see inflation come down and still have a relatively positive employment picture, what would be then the impetus for them to cut rates? And I think Chair Powell's comments around this, that we don't need to keep rates higher for longer if we're already getting the results that we, we need from a price stability standpoint. So I think we could see within the second half of next year, some cuts start to happen. Just to sort of normalize um, rates or to whatever. normalize yeah. rates and this idea, and I hate to bring this up because I think this was like the topic in August of the neutral rate and right. R-star and, and trying to figure out these rates as to where the economy is neither contracting or expanding. I think that's an interesting element in this dialogue. We don't need to be in a full-blown recession or to really see something break for the, Fed, for the Fed to say, you know what, maybe we should pull back on rates a little bit. Yeah. And so for the Fed to pull back on rates, what would they need to see from your perspective in the data uh, that we aren't seeing yet? The risk to that, inflation, right? So they need to see inflation come down in a more material way. I think the data that we've we've actually received over the, the past even past couple of days, I was going to say past couple of weeks, but the past couple of days, it's been conflicting, right? You look at the ISM services and that all of a sudden is telling us that the economy is still hot. You look at the data within the beige book and all of a sudden it was telling you that the consumer maybe maybe isn't as healthy and is making some of these tougher decisions. And really all of that is just concentrated within travel and leisure. And so I think they need to see a more stable um, inflation um, for them to really be convinced that their job is done. We're anticipating that we could see about, you know, inflation come down to three and a half percent, maybe two and a half percent by next year. So this idea of them sticking to their guns on two percent is going to be an interesting dialogue as well.